Hello friends, welcome back to Aaron's Anxiety. I am your host Aaron, your personal guide through anxiety. I've got some big news. I've got some big things going on in Aaron's life, okay? And so I want to do uh, unleash, unleash the dragon, unleash the news uh, to you guys. Uh, <laughs> So I haven't been on for a while, and it's because there's been a lot of crazy cool stuff happening in Aaron's life, okay? And sometimes you gotta take a break, and you gotta you gotta indulge in these things. So uh, for my avid subscribers, you'll know that I have uh, a baby coming uh, my way. Sam is pregnant for the second time, and uh, we have uh, recently found out that Aaron and Sam are having a. It's my drum roll. We're having a little baby girl. Yes, a little baby girl is on her way. Not right now. I mean, she's working. She's, she's building kidneys and pancreases and stuff like that. But she is on her way to see her father, me, who will then give her one million kisses. She's not here yet, but she's 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 got to get all that stuff worked out. Um, <laughs> so she's on her way, and I'm super excited about it. So we've been, you know, we have to, I have to remodel a nursery, which will, you know, it's fun. It's fun. So <laughs> keep telling yourself it's fun. Um, work is going like a house of fire, which is wonderful. I love that. And uh, I've also been helping my, my best friend slash brother-in-law put together a wedding venue for his soon-to-be marriage. So, talk about it going above and beyond. Not only did he propose, but he's going to build the venue in which they're going to get married. So, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Lots going on, and I love it. So, Cool announcement. Okay, so getting into the video here, I have something really important to share. Okay, I've, I've made some discoveries about Aaron in the last few weeks, besides the fact that he'll talk in third person sometimes. <laughs> so, um, before I tell you though, please like, comment, subscribe, like the video, helps get it out to more people. Comment, say hi, subscribe, would love to have you part of the team, and join us on the Aaron's Anxiety Family Facebook page. Love to have you there as well. So, getting into the story, I found something out about myself. I can take the collection of all the videos that I have, and you're gonna see a good portion of it is Aaron taking Lexapro, Aaron adjusting his Lexapro, Aaron going up, Aaron going down, Aaron going to two and a half milligrams, going to 10 milligrams, going to five milligrams, trying seven and a half. Like, <laughs> there's so many ups and downs that I do. And so part of that is because I wanna see what's gonna happen. My, my curious brain's like, hey, let's see if you can go without the medication. You know, I had a video not too long ago where I got, what was it, two months without it, and I decided to hop back on the train because it wasn't enough. So in this time, I feel like whenever I would get away from anxiety, or from anxiety, uh, which kind of, when I would get away from, yeah, I guess it works. When I get away from the anxiety uh, with Lexapro, I'd always feel like, well, maybe I'm good now. You know what I mean? And so then I'd hop off, and then everything would kind of slowly, but surely, over the course of days to weeks, uh, just get slow. my anxiety would go up and up and up until I got back on, and there we are. So this is, I mean, two and a half years here, at least, in the making of me making this video right here, that I'm still finding stuff out about me and my journey, and what I'm capable of and what I'm not capable of. And so something that I discovered was that there's this thing it's called the, the Alcoholics Anonymous use it, and I think it's used for alcohol and other you know addictive things, but it kind of it kind of flows right in line with what we're doing, and it's called the Pink Cloud. I've never heard of the Pink Cloud before, but basically, in a nutshell, what the Pink Cloud is, I gotta grab a ticket. Hold on, toll roads, the government, man, they're always watching. So what the pink cloud is, is this when alcoholics stop drinking for a while and they kind of baseline, they have this feeling, and I don't, I'm not an alcoholic, so I'm, I'm speaking how to turn for alcohol. It was an alcoholic that had told me about it, so I'm speaking through them. So, and if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, but basically the, the pink cloud comes in where once they stop drinking for a while, they'll have this almost euphoric kind of feeling of, I feel good, I feel happy, I feel safe, and I feel like I'm on top of the world. You're in this pink cloud. And what they do is once they start feeling good, then they go, oh, I must be okay. I must not be addicted to this anymore. I can allow myself to have a couple drinks. 
And so being like they're feeling so good, let's celebrate. And then they toss a couple back and then they just kind of do that. And so whenever they're in the pink cloud, they feel like life's good and they can get back in it just to remind themselves that, hey, you should have just stayed the course and you should have just hung on to doing what you knew was right by not having a drink okay? and just drinking water or drinking something else, drinking a pop, something else that doesn't put you in that, that bad feeling. So that's the situation that I've been putting myself in consistently and I haven't even realized it. I say it all the time. You're never too young to teach and you're never too old to learn. Okay, I try to hold these things in my head. And so just when you think you're on top of everything, boom, something like this happens, you're like, ah, I'm in a pink cloud. I keep doing this to myself and I keep getting myself out of the cloud. <sighs> so <laughs> here's the new baseline for her. And this has been working out even better. So I've always taken my medication around 10 o'clock in the morning. That's when I'm out, that's when I'm heading to work, blah, blah, blah. I switched back. Okay, so for those of you that have been through my journey since day one, you'll know that I had to do it in the morning uh, because it was uh, I was taking Zoloft at the time and it was messing with my sleep. It was giving me sleep, sleep problems. So I had to bump it in the morning, which is fine. That was great, that's a great thing. So if you're having sleep problems and you're on this medication, try it in the morning, it'll probably help you a lot. However, after you know a few weeks of that, I switched over to Lexapro. Well, Lexapro, I didn't know this, Lexapro wasn't affecting my sleep, but I was just on the habit of taking that in the morning. So, this second time around, I didn't really have much of a choice, I just got myself like, up. Oh, I, I was not taking my pills. I can feel my anxiety come back, I need to get back on this train. And so I took uh, Lexapro, I took the dosage I was taking around six, five, six, and usually I go to bed around 10. So, but I went to sleep that night and I slept like, a, I wouldn't say a baby because they wake up, if you have children, they wake up every two hours crying and pooping. So I wasn't sleeping like that, but I was sleeping like a log. I guess I don't work because logs don't sleep either. I was sleeping really good, okay? All the similes aside, I was sleeping really good. I slept really sound. By the time I woke up in the morning, I didn't want to wake up. I felt like still a little drowsy, but then when I woke up, I felt happy and stuff, which is good. These are good things. Um, but what I was finding, like I was having before, is sometimes I would get a baseline of anxiety when I was taking even the Lexapro. I've got to bring it back up here. I would get a baseline of anxiety. What that did is that kind of curved my baseline so that any of the side effects that I would have from taking the pill, they usually happen right after you take it, like 20, 30 minutes, an hour, something like that. So by that time, you know, whenever that was happening, I was sleeping. So there was no anxiety when I woke up. So this is how things have been going. It's been going like this for about a week and a half. Not a long time, but it's still working really good. My anxiety is calmed back down. I'm back to a happy, safe place. And so now, knowing what I know about the pink cloud, I don't think I want to mess with it anymore. You know, I've said for a long time that if, if Lexapro is something that makes me feel good for the rest of my life, then so be it. As long as I have access to it, then I don't have any problem taking it. Okay, it does not scare me like it used to. It used to be, oh, I don't want to take it. Is it forever? Like, I didn't, I didn't, that's why not. But then once you get out of anxiety, then you go, oh, yeah, no, we're just going to keep doing this. This is great. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, so if you guys have had that similar kind of thing, uh, as far as like the pink cloud, or if you can, you know, agree with me with this pink cloud, let me know in the comments below. But it seems to be something that I've fallen in line with time after time. Okay, and it's time for Aaron to just stop. Sorry, I always get caught whenever we do. So it's time for Aaron to stop, slow down, and uh, especially with the baby coming, gotta make sure my uh, mental state is happy and healthy. So I'm gonna call again because if I didn't answer the first time, why would I ask the second time? All right, friends, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you back to your day. Let me know your comments below. That's the third one. And I will chat with you a little bit later on. All right, and until next time, I love you. I'm Aaron, you're awesome. I'll see you in the next video.